Hi, I'm Amanda, and I'm so excited to be here at Sewing Studio today to show you the Brother PS300 sewing machine. This is an excellent budget-friendly machine that's packed full of great features, and it's perfect for anyone who is new to sewing, and it's also a great choice for children. Let me show you what's included and how to use it. Let's talk about what's included with your machine. When you open your box, you'll find a quick reference guide and an instruction manual which also lists all of the accessories that I'm about to show you. You will receive the foot J, which is a zigzag foot, foot A, which is your buttonhole foot, foot G, which is an overcasting foot, foot N, a monogramming foot, your zipper foot, which is foot I, foot R, which is the blind stitch foot, and also a button fitting foot, which is M. You also receive a seam ripper, four bobbin, one will be on your machine, a needle set, a twin needle, a ballpoint needle, a cleaning brush, a disc shaped screwdriver, which is really handy, a large spool cap, a small spool cap, the medium spool cap will already be on your machine and an extra spool pin. You will also of course receive the foot controller. You will also receive this great extension table as well as this pouch to store all of your accessories. Another feature I love about the Brother PS300 is it has a removable accessory tray. When you remove your accessory tray, you can see there's a perfect place to store all of those accessories that are included with your machine. It also has the ability to sew with a free arm. A free arm is great for sewing things in a circle such as sleeves, pant legs, or tote bags. When the accessory tray is removed, you can also install the extension table. This extension table is perfect when you're sewing anything that's larger, such as a quilt or any kind of a larger project and it helps keep your fabric from dragging or, or being pulled down. Next, let's wind a bobbin and thread our machine. At the back of your machine, you'll notice a spool pin with a spool cap on it. Remove the spool cap and place your thread. Make sure that your thread is feeding from underneath and then place your spool cap on top of the spool pin, making sure that your spool cap is wider than your spool of thread. Next, you'll take a look at the diagram. When you're winding a bobbin, you wanna make sure that you're following the dotted line path of the diagram that's on the top of your machine. So the first place that we will put our thread is underneath this metal hook. Next, you'll slide your thread around this white piece right here. Third, you're going to make your thread go underneath this small metal hook and around the bottom of the metal disc. Last, you'll place your bobbin on top of the bobbin winder. Make sure that you hear a slight click. That's how you know that it's all the way down. And then take your thread and wind it a few times before using the automatic thread cutter right here at the bottom of the bobbin winder. And then slide your bobbin over to the right and you'll hear a click and that's how you know that it's in the right place. Next, you tell the machine to wind your bobbin by either pressing the foot pedal or the button and begin winding your bobbin. When you're installing your bobbin, there's a diagram that's very helpful to look at right here next to where you put your bobbin in and it shows you these steps that I'm about to show you. So first, you will slide this piece over to the right which will pop up the bobbin cover. Remove that cover. Next, place your bobbin in the shape of a P with the thread feeding off to the left of your bobbin and drop it into the bobbin case. Next, you'll follow this thread path with your thread. At the end, it will cut your thread for you to the perfect length. Finally, replace your bobbin cover You'll hear a click and your bobbin has been successfully installed. When you're done winding your bobbin, make sure to remember to slide your bobbin winder 
back to the left hand position. Before we start threading our upper thread, there are a couple of things to remember. The first is to make sure that when you're threading your machine, you have your presser foot in the up position. Next, you want to make sure that it's in the proper position for threading. To do this, press the needle down and needle up button to make sure that it's ready. To begin threading, make sure that your thread is feeding from underneath, just like it did when we were winding our bobbin. Also double check that you still have on your spool cap that is larger than the spool of your thread. Next, you'll slide your thread under the metal hook around the white piece right here, down and around this bottom where it says three. Sweep your thread along step four and down for step five, which is sliding your thread into this small hook. Next, we're gonna use the needle threader. To use the needle threader, you will push down on this gray lever and slide your thread under this metal hook. Push down so that this metal bar comes all the way over and slide your thread straight into these, this notch right here. There's an opening. And then push it, your thread back and release the lever. When you do this, you'll notice that a small loop was created at the back of the needle and this is what you'll pull through to have your needle threaded. Then slide your thread into the opening of your presser foot and towards the back of your machine. Now let's talk about the buttons on the front of the machine. On the top of your machine, you'll find your tension selector dial. Then down here, we have a few more buttons. This is your reverse button. And when you want to reverse on this sewing machine, you'll hold this button down to reverse. This button is your start stop button because the PS300 has the option of sewing with a start stop button instead of using a foot control. This is your needle up and needle down button. Over here, we have our stitch selector buttons. So here you can switch between your utility stitches and your monogram stitches. You'll use the plus and minus signs to select your stitch from your 100 installed utility stitches as well as your monogram stitches, which we'll talk about a little more later. You can select your stitch length by increasing here with the plus button and decreasing with the minus, and the same with your stitch width by increasing and decreasing the stitch width. When you notice there's a circle around the stitch length and the stitch width, that tells you that that's the standard setting and where you are likely to do most of your sewing. Now let me show you how to select a stitch. On the right side of your machine, you can see all of the included stitches that the PS300 has. At the top, you'll see all of the utility stitches. This little picture here also goes with this button up top. So when you want to select one of the 100 included utility stitches, you will press this button. When this is selected, the green light will turn on. If you want to use the monogram stitches that has the A, you'll press that button with the A and your machine will switch to the monogramming stitches and the green light will be here instead. So if I want to select the zigzag stitch, I can see on the right side of my machine that 04 is the zigzag stitch. So I will double check that my machine is set for utility stitches, which it is, my green light is on. And next I will navigate to stitch four by using these buttons. Since it's four, I don't need to touch this because there's a zero in front, but I need to take this one up to four. Now I have selected stitch four, which is the zigzag stitch. Up here, you can see that the machine has already switched my length and width to the proper setting for a basic zigzag stitch. And it also tells me at the top which foot that I need to have installed on my machine. For this stitch, the J foot is the correct foot, and that is the foot that I currently have installed. To select a character or monogram stitch, 
you'll press this button to switch to the character and monogram section for the stitches. You'll see that my memory is cleared and when the when you switch to this setting for the first time, you'll have two minus signs here, a zero zero, and it'll automatically default to zero one. That is letter A. But if you wanted to sew a word, for example, sew, S-E-W, you'll find the corresponding numbers down here for each of those letters. So the first letter I would like to stitch out is S, which is number 19. So I will use this side to select the one, and then I will go up to the nine. The next part is adding it to the machine's memory. And to do that, you press this plus sign next to the zero, zero. Now it has been stored. The next letter that I'd like to stitch is the E. E is zero, five. So I will change this to a zero and go down to five. And I'm going to add that as well. The third and final letter that we're gonna stitch out is the W, which is number 23. Add. Now the word sew, S-E-W, has been saved into the memory of the machine. To sew, you'll need the N foot. And I know that because when I switched and selected this stitch, it changed from J from the zigzag to N for the monogram or character stitch. So I've already installed the N foot on my machine. So we're ready to sew. Lower your presser foot and press the start button. When your machine finishes stitching, raise your needle, lift your presser foot and cut your threads. Here you can see the machine stitched out the word sew. You can use your tiny scissors to cut these little jump threads in between. When you're done using the character stitches, it's important to remember to clear your memory so you have a fresh start for the next time you wanna use those. So to do that, just press the minus button down here until your screen is back at the original setting, which shows stitch one, which would be the A, the two minus signs and the two zeros. That's how you know you're ready for your next letter. Now I'm gonna show you how to change the presser foot. When you purchase your machine, the J foot will already be installed for you, but let's go over how you change this foot. To change your presser foot, you're going to make sure that it is lifted. That's done by lifting this bar right here. So once it's lifted, you're gonna reach around to the back of your machine where there's a little button. When you push this little black button, your presser foot will drop off. To install your presser foot, place the foot underneath the bar, lining up this bar with right here and lower your presser foot. When it's in the correct position, you'll hear a click and when you lift, it'll lift up your presser foot. You have two options for sewing with this machine. You can plug in your foot pedal or you can sew with the start stop button. I'll show you how to do that now. To plug in your foot pedal, you're gonna plug it in right here. When your foot pedal is plugged in, if you try to press the start stop button to sew instead, you'll receive an error code like this. The machine is just telling you, you have to pick. You can either sew with the foot pedal or without. And if you'd like to sew with a start stop button, you'll have to remove the foot pedal. Now to sew with the start stop button, it's as easy as pressing the button to start sewing in the forward motion and pressing the button again to stop your sewing. Remember that you can control the speed of how fast you're sewing with this lever right here. A couple of helpful tips when sewing are to remember that when you're threading your machine, you need to have your presser foot in the highest position. Also, when using the auto threader, make sure that your needle is in the highest position by pressing that needle up and needle down button. 
Now that you know how to use the Brother PS300, it's time to get sewing. If you have any questions, please give us a call or come visit us at the store. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.